Hello again. Every day seems to bring forth some new fantasy summoned up from the past with the intention of showing how wicked, devious and dishonest white Europeans have been in comparison with the clever, thoughtful, industrious and intelligent Africans upon whose labour both the British Empire and the Industrial Revolution were founded. The latest piece of work in this line really is something to relish for it purports to show that one of the key developments of Britain's Industrial Revolution, the mass production of wrought iron, was actually invented by African slaves in the Caribbean and stolen by a white man who claimed credit for it. This is a thesis which both the Guardian newspaper and New Scientist magazine are publicising this week. It is based upon the work of a woman called Jenny Bolstrode, who lectures in the history of science and technology at University College London and says this innovation kicks off Britain as a major iron producer and was one of the most important innovations in the making of the modern world. Well, yes, that's true. The production of wrought iron was very important and we think about things like the Crystal Palace um, the roof of the Bethnal Green Museum, Palm House at Kew Gardens, uh, arches in various railway stations and so on at that time. Gosh, I only think it was black slaves who came up with this idea and have not until now been given the credit they deserve. In the description to this video, I give a link to the piece published in The Guardian this morning as well as a link to the paper in which this idea originally appeared. Even without going through the paper though, I smelled a rat when reading what was said in The Guardian, which gave a praise of the uh, whole idea. As soon as I read that, the innovation was first developed by 76 black Jamaican metallurgists at an ironworks near Morant Bay, Jamaica. I could not help asking myself where these 76 metallurgists studied and trained and why it would be necessary for an iron foundry to employ nearly 80 metallurgists. A metallurgist is of course an expert in metals that studies their properties and so on. It's a highly specialised profession. What we are talking about in the West Indies in the 18th century is not 76 metallurgists at all but rather that many men in an ironworks, in a foundry, stoking the fires and operating the machinery and so on. These were slaves working under the supervision of white overseers. If I were to say that the steel plant in the Northamptonshire town of Corby has 500 metallurgists working there, this would sound absurd. There are certainly 500 people working there, who are producing steel, but I doubt if there's more than one or two metallurgists in the place. The talk of 76 metallurgists is a deliberate contrivance to make the black slaves seem more learned and important than was actually the case. I give a link to the paper upon which all this is based, but I fear viewers will find it pretty heavy going. Jenny Bolstrode writes in an extraordinarily fancy way as though to conceal her meaning rather than to make it plain. She seems to be drunk on her words and it's not always easy to see what she's actually driving at. Here's a sample. Against the onslaught of Europe's human trade, working iron was a means of expression to forge fighting alliances, heal sickness and express grief. Black Jamaicans articulated these living histories with their experiences in the diaspora and in doing so made new forms of meaning. The second section introduced some of the conditions of these articulations. Okay, how was working iron a means of healing sickness or expressing grief? I don't understand. Black Jamaicans articulated these living histories with their experiences in the diaspora and in doing so made new forms of meaning. Perhaps I'm more slow-witted than the average reader, but I confess myself unable to make much sense of this. Then too, there's a great deal about a beer, 
which I find odd in an article which supposedly revolutionises our ideas about the origin of the mass production of wrought iron during the Industrial Revolution. Obeah is a Jamaican form of witchcraft, similar in some ways to the voodoo of Haiti. I dare say that many viewers will know that voodoo is based upon the religious beliefs of West Africa and was taken to the Caribbean by slaves brought there from Dahomey and Benin. There are other versions of this folk religion called by different names in the various islands. Uh, in Grenada, for instance, it's known as Shango, named after the Yoruba god of thunder. And in South America, there's a, another form with a completely different name. In Jamaica, Obia men or women roughly correspond to our ideas of African witch doctors. Why Bolstrode spends so much time on this subject and what relevance it has to metallurgy is not altogether clear to me. As for the idea that these 76 slaves really did come up with the idea of making wrought iron in the way suggested, just reading the paper is enough to dispel the idea. Here is a passage about the starting of the Jamaican foundry in which black slaves would work. It begins with a description of the uh, workplace. Four forges containing about 3,000 bricks each and two containing about 20,000. A water wheel, at least two furnaces and rolling mills for which supply and water was a significant preoccupation of the lease. Readers sent to England to engage 60 white artificers for the instruction of black metallurgists in using this specialist machinery but rapidly found their services unnecessary. Within a few years, the black metallurgists were sufficiently acquainted with the business for a reader to dismiss all the white men but two, and a perfect foundry was established, where not only sugar utensils were made, but cannon manufactured. Yet, stripped of all the verbiage, in plain language, this means that 60 white men came to Jamaica and taught the 76 black slaves how to work in the foundry. Once they'd been trained to stoke the fires and carry the ore and so on and carry out the various other tasks, two white men remained as overseers supervising the work. How this can possibly be interpreted as 76 metallurgists revolutionising the production of wrought iron is a complete mystery to me but I rather suspect this is about to enter the mythology of the new history of the British Empire.